Hello and welcome to Getting Started with AI Ops using the SUSE Support Config Utilities. Uh, in this session, uh, we're going to talk about how you can use a um, pipeline model to do automated uh, data collection, support analysis, and provide guidance. So my name is Ann Davis. I am a software engineer at SUSE. I've been here a little over 15 years. And um, my current role is as a technical account manager working with embedded system and hardware partners. Brian? Thank you, Ann. Yep, my name is Brian Gartner. I work on the Alliances team. I'm a senior technology strategist. I work with hardware partners, software partners, embedded partners. Been here for about almost a decade. So way beyond, or way okay. less than Ann. <laughs> okay. Back to you, Ann. You can go ahead and start on the next uh, All right. agenda. So our agenda today, um, do an introduction, give just a little more background and a little more description of the project. Uh, then we have a tool set section where we'll, we'll talk about the different tools that we're using in this project, open source tools. Uh, then Brian will talk about uh, data pipeline flow. And uh, then we'll have a summary where we discuss, uh, we'll show some references and talk about ideas for next steps and collaboration. So first of all, why? What prompted this project? Uh, why is it important? So um, I would say over a year ago, Brian started this project, and I think, you know, in large part to address the fact that trying to maintain support and administer systems in edge to core to cloud environments is really difficult. Um, frankly, maintaining and supporting systems in a data center is, is already <laughs> pretty overwhelming. And then you add in um, basically, you know, systems at the edge, and then you might have, for instance, a core to cloud a hybrid uh, infrastructure there. And then on all these levels, you have ap application infrastructures uh, in on different systems or in clusters. Basically, the whole thing is really challenging to try to maintain support and administer. So we need tools, we need automated tools to essentially help us stay above water on this. So who could benefit from this project? First of all, um, down here at the end of this list, um, first of all, this project is a very flexible framework. Um, so it can be used in lots of ways and it can apply to a lot of different use cases. But um, from just kind of the support standpoint, um, I would say the first people who could benefit from this are system administrators, especially um, maintainers of edge to core to cloud environments uh, because of that pipeline model. Um, then also uh, support engineers can benefit because uh, there are a lot of analysis tools uh, in the framework that can help them to look at a support config and, and um, maybe get some initial guidance on where to go for solutions and um, resolution on issues. And then from a development standpoint, basically, again, it's a flexible framework. So we'd, we'd love to see interest and we think it could be used um, in many different, uh, many different places across the whole, you know, edge to core to cloud environment. Um, also interest from data scientists, developers, all that. So we're hoping for collaboration on that front. So for a little more information about a uh, description of the proposed solution. So what uh, we're working on here is a project that combines existing um, and new open source tools. Um, so both ones that are already available and new tools that we're developing. And we're creating a support framework that essentially um, proactively collects system data in an automated manner. And Brian will talk more about that, kind of the things that prompt collecting system data. Then um, when that data comes in, the, we have tools that reactively analyze the data and then we take the results from those analyses and provide guidance or, um, and or we transport the data to other stages in the pipeline for maybe a, additional investigation. And the whole, the whole idea is it's an automated uh, solution, automated pipeline that um, can analyze different aspects of a support config or other information at different stages in the pipeline. And the picture here you'll see on the left is uh, the edge. In the center here, that's that's pretty much the core, but it, you know it might be a hybrid 
um, environment where you have like a data center and maybe systems in the cloud. And then on the right here, we have SUSE because basically as you're trying, as you're moving support data through the pipeline, the idea is to try to um, analyze it and provide guidance all along. And maybe, maybe issues can be solved earlier in the pipeline, but some issues may need to be escalated to SUSE. And it's a bi-directional pipeline because uh, if you find solutions, uh, you might want to propagate those back uh, to be applied at the different stages, um, either at the edge or in the core or wherever. So let's talk a little bit more about the tools. Um, I'll cover SUSE support utilities, uh, and then Brian will discuss some the proactive data collection and uh, guidance and transport tools, and uh, then we'll talk about machine learning models. So our first tool that we're talking about is SUSE Support Config. So SUSE Support Config is, it's the SUSE way of collecting system data. And if you've ever interacted with SUSE Support, you may be familiar with it because, um, for instance, if you open a service request with SUSE Support, they will often ask for Support Config output, they will often ask for a Support Config. Um, one note that, uh, we do have, there's another session here at SUSE, uh, SUSECon this year that, it, that focuses on support config. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that if you'd like more information about, about support config. Um, support config is included in SLES, uh, it's installed by default, and then it has a lot of options to control which data, which data gets, um, gets collected. So let's, oh, and, and after you collect the data, it creates an archive, and that archive, a tarball, can either be sent to SUSE support or it can be used by other tools, for instance, in this project, um, tools that do analysis or transport or whatever. So let's take a look at a demo, a quick demo of SUSE support config. So um, the support config utility is provided in the um, support utils package. You'll see that right there. And the support utils package is included in the base system module for SLES, and it is installed by default. So let's run support config here. And we're running it with the minimal option. That was the dash M option, it went pretty fast. The minimal option only collects um, some about five different things about a system. So it does collect basics uh, information. It collects information about RPMs. Then you'll notice here, all these excluded, those are not being collected because I ran it with the minimal option. If you ran it without any options, if you just run support config without any options, all this type of information would be collected and placed in files. And then those files uh, are, are put together into a tarball, which is saved in var log um, and the, the name of the um, of the support config file, it starts with SCC and then it will have the name of the system and the date that the support config was taken. So let's talk about another uh, SUSE support utility. SCA tool is an analysis tool. It basically looks at a SUSE support config and then evaluates the system uh, for the, basically evaluates the health of the system as reflected in the support config output. Um, again, this is provided in SLES as well. It's not installed by default, but it is there. Uh, it's in the server, I think it's in the um, server applications module. Um, it uses patterns uh, to analyze different aspects of a support config, and then its output is an HTML file. Let's take a demo of this one, look at a demo. So SCA tool, it is, it is provided in the um, SCA server report package. You'll see right there. And let's go ahead and run it on a specific support config. That's a support config tarball there. And you notice here, there are a bunch of patterns. It's applying 244 patterns to check different aspects, different parameters in that support config. Um, and once it finishes that analysis, it's pretty quick here, actually, um, it will create an HTML file right there. And then if you look at that HTML file, you can see there's information. It pulls, gives you the basic information about the system from the support config. And then it also covers a bunch of um, 
aspects or covers areas like critical issues, warning issues, et cetera. And then um, any of these issues that you see listed there, they are links you can actually go check on. You can actually click on them and they will um, give you more information about that, that issue that was found as critical or whatever. All right. Whoops, I'm sorry, uh, Brian. <laughs> I clicked quickly. Go ahead. Yep. So, yep. And this is the proactive data collection, and it's basically called a LUDO. And if you want a hint, that is what it stands for as translation in Esperanto. But it, there is a GitHub source, and you can do that. You can download the source, or you can go to the open build service, like showing up here, to install the package, basically adding the repository, and then installing the package. And its job in life is to start looking for hints and see if there's any clues that would make sense to grab content. So as you can see here, we're running it, the Aludo command. And there is a simple comp file that says, what do you want to run? What do you want to check? And where do you want to put the output? And the goal of this is to collect the hints and bundle it with a support config to give us more information. And what you're seeing here at the highlighted thing is we use the Etsy machine ID to make a unique output for this. But it is running that. And if you look over on the slide and the, the words, two of the hints that are running are looking for ButterFS snapshots. And you'll see here when I did run it in that directory, there's a timestamp put there to the new one. And because this is the first time it run, it went back to day zero, time zero for seconds to compare that to. And you'll notice if you look at the report that there was like 15 things in ButterFS snapshots that were available. And it does the diffs for you for each one of those things. So now you can see what happened since the last time it ran. And in this, you can actually look in um, the output again and, and just get an idea. And that's where it threw it with the transport, which just in slash temp. But if I run it again, you'll notice that it goes, uh, you know, there's not really anything that's happened since last time. There are no more snapshots. There's no journal CTL output. So therefore, Aludo is done, and it has created that bundled version of support config. And with that, Ann, I'm going to hand it back to you to go on to the next tool that okay. we can talk Thank about. Thank you, Brian. So the next tool is SCAL0. Um, this is a new tool that we're developing that um, so it's not like a support configure SCA tool that is included in, in SLES, uh, but we are right, basically there's a GitHub project for this and that'll be provided in the references. So SCAL0 analyzes support config data and uh, similar to, so SCAL0 analyzes support config data and similar to SCA tool, it uses modules. Uh, SCA tool uses patterns, but SCAL0 uses modules to analyze different types of data. Um, that means it's also, um, you know, we could expand on it. So we'd love to see new, uh, you know, we need to write other modules, uh, additional modules for it. So the outputs from SCAL0, um, it gives a long form report to standard out, but in addition, it creates a file with name value pairs um, with all the data that is included in the long form report. Um, and in, and it also has results for each category that it's checking, a thumbs up or thumbs down result, then these uh, results can be parsed by other tools in the framework um, and, and used to determine what to do, what guidance to provide, or where to move this information through uh, the pipeline. So let's look at uh, how SCAL0 runs. So we're gonna go ahead and run it. Um, first of all, let's look at um, how it's provided. It is provided in an SCAL0 package, and there is a SUSE data package that goes with it. Um, the last two things on that list are actually, the last three things on the list are actually um, from the SUSE support config utilities. So if we go ahead and run SCAL, SCAL0, um, we are going to, um, state the, the output file we want to create, that's the name value output file, and then we're running it on a support config. That's the SCC file you see there. And 
The output, basically you see a lot of information. Some of the information that differs from SCA tool is we have information about system certifications here um, and things like that. So that was kind of a, that was a very quick <laughs> run through, but um, hopefully if you're looking at this later, you can go through this, um, this recording again and take a look at the different uh, things that SCA L0 provides. So Brian, turn it back over to you. Thank you, Ann. And uh, I want to talk about next the assess and the evaluate thing. Okay, so now we have a, a set of tools. And like Ann mentioned, all of these things are very modular. They can be included in, in whatever form we want. And you can add them, subtract them, ignore them, do whatever. So the next one is that assess and evaluate. And if you look that up in Esperanto, that'll be taxi. And Ann, if you want to go to that next slide. So again, you can go to the GitHub site, you can download the source. You can do the same thing as before because there is a RPM package built up on the open build service and you can install it. But what this is going to do is anytime data shows up in a certain space, it'll run these things. And you can look at some of the packages it suggests to use. So like support config, SEAL0, Aludo, um, SEA tool. All of those are support suggested things to run. If they're available, it will run that set. If that's not, it skips that. And you can see again, you know, it's adding the repo, refreshing the repositories, and then installing the package. And what it'll do next, it'll run it. And because um, all of those tools were available except Taxi itself on the system, it'll run all of them for you and give you the output. And we'll see that here in just a second. And just to be totally open and honest, there's a little glitch here. It says warning, this thing didn't install, but that was a typo of one of the packages that was already installed. Not a problem at all, it's just installing Taxi. So if you see those red things at the bottom, okay. And again, it has a comp file, it says, what do you wanna do? Where do you wanna take the input? Where do you wanna have a scratch directory to play with it? And where do you put the output with all of those analysis? So we'll go ahead and run that. And there was no data in, so it went, yeah, never mind. And remember, I said in slash temp, that's where that output was from Aludo. I'm just going to copy that into the input directory and then run taxi again. And you'll see it's running all this stuff now. And it did that all very quickly. And you can see it took the report output for Aludo. And this should look familiar to when we ran Aludo. Okay, it shows the ButterFS issues. Next, we'll look at the SAAL0 output. And again, looking at that report and whatnot, you can see it looked at, found the OSs, it found the kernel. And you can see thumbs up and thumbs down, the one, zero, negative one output. And then the SCA tool is also running. And this is just the curse, curse's way to look at the web page. But with that, we now have Taxi evaluating things and deciding what to do. And so with that, Ann, let's go okay. back to you for the next step. All right. Actually, Brian, I think we're to you here. Um, yep. And that, this is the data pipeline. So this is a representation of the, I do it in the mo model of a water flow. So that single node that ran a Ludo is what I call a droplet. And then it trickles into another system that could be a puddle. Okay, so it's, it's going again here and showing you that, but it collects that data and then it goes to the next and it goes to that puddle, that system and that system runs some things like the taxi thing to come up with out and that sends it to a pond where it can run even more stuff. So you can see how in this data pipeline flow that any of these things could be anywhere. It could be at an edge, that droplet could be the node at the edge. The pond could be a gateway that's accumulating all those edge devices or that, that puddle could be for a bunch of systems that are like your database, your mission critical servers. You can do this anywhere you want, however you want, and it is very modular to do this. And again, the pond could be another thing, and I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I wanna highlight the fact that if you were looking at the pond thing, you'll see there's a new thing to SCAL0 plus, and I'm gonna hand that to Ann to explain yeah, that. Okay, thanks, Brian. 
So SCAL0 Plus, um, this is a machine learning um, model for doing further analysis on a support config. So SCAL0 Plus, what it actually is in the, in the SCAL0 Plus package, you'll find SUSE internal modules and data sets for SCAL0. So it's a SUSE internal um, package at this point in time. Um, the reason it's SUSE internal is its purpose is to find SUSE support requests, SRs, or bugs that might be related to a specific support config that we're checking. Um, the, the model that we're using, the machine learning model that this uses, it uses nearest neighbor analysis to compare the support config data, all different kinds of support config data, against that same support config, the, those same parameters from support configs that are associated with SUSE SRs or with SUSE bugs. So essentially, we um, create data sets based on support config data from SUSE SRs and bugs. So we have data sets that is created from those that are created from that data. And then we compare the support config we're looking at against that data. And then we use nearest neighbor um, matching, nearest, na nearest neighbor analysis to try to find the best matches. Um, so it combines results across all kinds of, all uh, across a bunch of different data sets. So we might have data, a data set that reflects the system model. We might have a, we have a data set that reflects warning and error messages. We have a data set that reflects kernel modules that are loaded. And the nearest neighbor matching, um, the way it works is it um, can apply configurable weights to each one of those matches, then combine it all into um, hopefully a best match. And the output is it, it provides a list of the best matching SRs and bugs along with uh, the strength of the match. So let's uh, look at SCAL0 plus running. And again, it's not its own uh, product. So basically we're going to um, install to, to run it, and this would be SUSE internal, we're going to install the SCAL0 plus package. And you'll see here, we're looking at what, what is installed. So you'll notice there, there's an SCAL0 plus package and there's also an SCA data sets package. That's what provides those internal data sets. Um, so now we're going, going to go ahead and run SCAL0 and we don't have to do anything different. It, it runs just because those data sets are there, then the SCAL0 run will check, do that internal checking for SRs and bugs. So we run it against a support config and it provides the same output that we saw before with SCAL0. However, at the end, you'll notice it's checking SRs and it's checking bugs. And then it gives a score between zero and one for any of those. Um, you can see there, um, basically it's the same output of SCAL, SCAL zero, but with the, the SRs and bugs data. And with that, Brian, I think I'll turn it, oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> so let's look quickly at the name value pair output that it provides, same kind of thing. Um, but that was very quick, so uh, hopefully you can see it if you go back through this recording. Um, with that, Brian, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Ann. And you can go ahead on to the next slide. And this is an overview of the entire pipeline, okay, and also where the models will show up and whatnot. Let's start at the lower right. That's again, those individual nodes, and they could be anywhere from the cloud to a mobile device, okay? And those could those are the droplets where that initial acquisition of data, that proactive capture. And something I didn't mention earlier in the Ludo space is there's a system D timer that you can set up and say, I wanna run this every fourth hour or every third minute or once a week or you know every three months. You can run it whenever you want and I can collect that data. And then if you go to that bigger database that's on the lower right of the diagonal, that's that puddle where that can be accumulated and whatnot. And that's where Taxi runs. And it can run all of the tools that you put in that place. And even modularly, you could probably even run something that you wanna run there too. 
And then like Ann mentioned, once that is run, and we'll talk about this more in a minute too, it can go above the diagonal into the SUSE space and run SCAL0 plus and give you more detailed information about bugs or things like that. And what you might kind of realize too, if you look at the upper left, the data lake where all of that data is for all of those support configs that have come in over the history of SUSE, that's where those nearest neighbor models were generated from. And so when I have a certain OS, I can do that comparison and I can find out, oh, there's a pattern from SEA tool or there's a bug or a support request that matches this. And now you can see maybe a little bit why we call that L0. It's kind of like a helper for support people, whether you're the customer side on the lower right or you're a support person on the upper left of, from SUSE, that it gives you the quick way. It's kind of like a search enhancement to give you quick information. So now you can see this entire pipeline. And again, the data, the models flow from that lake in the upper left all the way down to potentially the puddle on the lower right, okay? And even potentially all the way to an individual node if you wanna run taxi way down there, you could. Okay, next slide, Ann. And just to give you, because again, and I always joke about this, software is never done, it's just released. That's what we're doing with this is we're doing incremental releases to go farther and farther down this path. So if you look at that first column, all those packages are available. And the reason they're starred is we're starting to build them as containers to maybe try and run them that way as well, okay? In the middle column, you saw how I had a very wimpy transport of just copying to like a local mount or slash temp or something like that. We're starting to add protocols to now move the data in a more efficient manner to wherever you want for that next level of the data pipeline. And then like Ann mentioned with the SEAL0, the report output, the name value pair, we're starting to come up with a schema that if you have some tool to run and you have that name value report, then farther down, we'll have a parser that can analyze all of the things that were run and come up with a step of guidance or notification or whatever you want to happen. So again, if you're on the lower right quadrant of that diagonal as a customer, you can get a lot of the input, you can get a notification, you can get an email saying, this is what we found. And it could give you the guidance of, uh, you might wanna move that over to the support thing because we think there's probably something like that that might be relevant. Next slide in. And to wrap up from a summary, we'll just do a quick, and you can hop to the next step. So just to give you an idea again with the project status, again, it's in a ready to try mode. You can see we've done this all. We can play with this and do this. We have like an edge infrastructure that we're setting up and doing it across there now. But proactive usage is really a good step. We're trying to automate things for all of those people we said were relative that in the who slide, why they would wanna do that. Because when you start scaling from, you know, a single small rack in a data center to multiple racks, and then out to the edge where you have 10,000 more nodes, you want to automate as much of this as you can and get these answers. And we've already started again doing that parser and assessing the current state and getting that notifying working and guidance to give you an idea of what to do next. And again, in any of those places where you run a tool like Taxi, you could have that happen for you. And it could say, yes, if my view of the world is this, the next thing to do is transport it over to this next puddle. Or if I, if I have this view, no, just send an email because I need to file a support request or do something, okay? So you can do it multiple ways because the configuration files are configurable and you can do that. And on to the next slide, Ann. So next steps again. What we wanna do is come up with more usage of the modularity. So more hints and clues, like in the Luna space, more assessment tool, tools, like in the taxi space, more guidance. You know, we would love to hear from folks here, what would you like to, the guidance to be? And again, like I mentioned on one of the slides earlier, how do we transport things? Where do we want that trending modes to go? Okay, and so what we're offering too is, of course, there's all, all these things are in GitHub, even the ones that Ann mentioned and whatnot. 
but there is an OpenSUSE Hack Week project coming up at the end of June. If you'd like to join, collaborate and help us with things, or just give us feedback, that would be incredibly important. And we would love to have you do that because you know we're doing this as a side project actually, but we would love to have more interaction and contribution. And with that, Anne, I think we're pretty much done. If you'd like to say anything, thank you all for coming. But Anne, go ahead on the references. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> so references. Um, yeah, so different GitHub projects, as you can see here, for some of the tools we've talked about. Um, and uh, also for some of the things like uh, the SUSE support configs, things like that. And with that, I thank everybody for attending. Thanks. Thank you.